All right, well, praise the Lord. Okay, so chapter one deals with the spirit of who? Divination. All right, I need y'all to talk to me. Uh, in the introduction, I did all the talking. Okay, this is going to be an exchange this time. Is that all right? Okay, so I've got to work with it. All right, it starts off by saying, the dictionary defines definition as the practice of attempting to foretell future events or discover hidden knowledge by occult or supernatural means. Simply saying, what this means is uh, that's the soothsayers. Uh, how many of y'all used to read horoscopes? Used to be Used to. Horoscopes. Used to. I, I hope you used to. I don't think you used to them all. <laughs> that falls under that same spirit. Yeah. And see, what people have to realize is they'll say, well, oh, it's just a horoscope. I'm just leaving the entertainment and yada, yada, yada. No, that stuff begins to open little doors. Yes, and you try to live your life and you live your day based off of what your horoscope said. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And you start going through the day right. looking for that stuff. As soon as something happens, you're like, oh, my horoscope told me. Listen, let me tell you something. If I tell you uh, on Friday you're going to see a blue car, <laughs> at some point on Friday, you're going to see a blue car. That don't mean I'm deep, don't mean I'm spiritual. <laughs> it's just practicality because it's random, but it's going to happen. Right. You see what I'm saying? And so what, has, what, what, what we have to be careful of is we have to stop looking for things to tell us what's coming and we overlook the Bible. Mm -hmm. right. I know people who will live their life based off of what the Detroit News and the Detroit Free Press had to say right. versus reading scripture to see what scripture had to say about the same situation you in. Right. Right. Wow. Yes. How they gonna tell you about what's going on with you and they don't even know you? You understand what I'm saying? Does that make sense? So, so, so you have to be careful uh, uh, early with this, with, with, with the spirit of divination because again, it will come and it will distract you. And the problem is, we think all this stuff is harmless. Right. Right. Folk meet you, they want to know what's your sign. <laughs> and then when you, them, when you tell them what your sign is. Ooh, that sign means this, and that sign acts like this, and then you start saying to yourself, Ooh, I got those traits. I do kind of act like that. Ooh, that must be true. And can I be honest with you? If you read the horoscope under each of those signs, you're going to see something under each of those signs that is in you. So truth is, we have to stop putting stock in stuff that ain't real. Mm -hmm. But because we have we because we give it so much credit and authority over our lives, it becomes the valid truth for us. And so therefore these lies become our reality. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Amen. So if you still read the horoscopes, stop. If you still walk around talking about some, I'm a cancer and I was born and I stopped. <laughs> What's your sign? I'm a Christian. Yes, yes, sir. Period, point blank. I'm a believer. Period, point blank. Yes, sir. Because the more you latch on to these things that are unlike God, the more susceptible you are to become the very thing you're trying to avoid. Yes. Does that also apply to, you know, like, well, basically, you can go to what your opinion is, is what to come up and tell you certain something about the world, so, you know, like, it, it, I thought what you're talking about, stop that stuff. <laughs> so, like, you know, stop it. Because here, here's the thing. Everything you think is harmless really ain't harmless. Yes. And there are some people who are spiritually weak and spiritually immature. Right. That when they see certain things, that's what they go off of because they open doors in the spirit. They have no power to close. They chose the path. 
And so when those doors are open, and because you have no power to close them, now you coming up in here, and we got to pray that stuff off you. All because, you know, you was on there or reading stuff, you already knew you had no business doing. You see what I'm saying? And see, the thing is, as, as believers, <coughs> we kind of think that, you know, we can do certain stuff, and it's okay. Amen. When I just go and pray about it, the Lord got my back. He watching over me. <coughs> Why did he got to defend against this when you already know you shouldn't be doing this? Mm -hmm. So now, you're, you're, you're in a predicament or in a place that you should have never been in in the first place. Right. Yeah. Stop letting everybody else speak over your life too. You got to watch who's talking over you, who's saying yeah. what to you. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. I know you're right, Pastor. Right. I used to have folk who would always try to lay down. Keep your hands to yourself. Keep your hands to yourself. Mm -hmm. You would tell them that? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. You can tell them, touch me. Yeah. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you already won't be there? My pastor and Bishop Neil C. Ellis were the only two for about 15, 20 years I ever let touch me. Only two. Because I believe wholeheartedly spirits transfer because they do. They do. And if your spirit ain't right and you and we're going to get into it. You deal with these Ouija boards and all this soup sand and all this magic and all these spells and all of this other type of stuff. And you want to come put your hands on me, we're about to have a fight. That's right. That's right. Because I don't need that dropping off in my spirit. And then a lot of things that I see in your hand. And the biggest problem is we're walking around with this stuff and don't even know about it. Right. Yes, ma'am. One time, um, Brother John, Elder John, was, um, he was directing the choir. Mm -hmm. And anyway, I was just feeling really joyful and I touched him you know, on his back. And it was like really hot, you know. And like I was really into the song and, and rejoicing and he was directing. And I, I, I never did understand what that meant. It was hot, like, you know, and he was just hot. And so, you know, when I touched his back, and I didn't understand that, it's still gone. It, it, it could have been that the mold uh, that the Lord was using him at that time, it could have been the power of God resting on him. That's why, and I, I don't try to be funny, but that's why after I preach, I don't immediately come down out the pulpit. Because my spirit is old. That's why the first responsibility he has is to come pray for me. Amen. I see that. I see that. That's his responsibility. No matter where I go, no matter where I'm preaching, when I'm done, he's to immediately come pray for me because he has to start closing those doors. Amen. Amen. He has to start covering me before I go out and start shaking hands. Because just because a person, I see you, just because a person is smiling at you after you've come down from your mountaintop experience, don't mean they're smiling at you because they love you. Okay. Okay. Don't mean they're smiling at you with your best interest at heart. That's right. Amen. So, 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 so when you're operating in, in, in spiritual areas, you have to have your antennas up and you have to be watchful. And at that point, that's where, that's really when you're most sensitive. Mm -hmm. Right. And right. that's when God's going to really start showing you stuff. That's when God's really going to start speaking. And you got to be careful because if you're not in the place where you need to be, when mm -hmm. those spirits start trying to mm -hmm. move off one person and jump on mm -hmm. you, you won't be able to fight that stuff off. Mm -hmm. okay. What do you think about, because I'm not looking that king that I would do it a lot in our church when somebody comes up and a lot of people just start jumping up and laying their hands on them or surrounding them. I don't really, you know what I'm saying? If somebody's coming up for prayer and everybody coming up to run and touch them. Well, really... <coughs> you, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what answer you want? I, I you, want you want my good pastor answer the truth. Or you, you know, want that the answer truth. that 
you know, the so truth that we need to hear. They should be running. They're not running on me any harm. They should. But here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Okay, Jesus. There are so many things in church we've made acceptable, and we've become used to operating out of the world. Okay. Uh, first of all, Scripture tells us plainly: lay hands what? Mm -hmm. Right. So, in other words, don't be so quick to get up and start touching me. Okay. Now, here's the thing: because these practices are good church things. That's what you do in church. Somebody comes and joins the church, they cry. The first thing you're supposed to do is start laying your hands and start praying. But under what authority do you have to lay your hands on somebody? Good. How are you going to pray me through when you still by? How are you going to get me free and you still struggling with not having sex before marriage? You understand what I'm saying? Right. So, so consequently, what has to happen, and this this is one of those things that as we go, she came in all up and praised the Lord. This is one of those things that as we go, we're going to have to teach you. Because it's not easy to change a culture that's been in place for 10 plus years. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so because nobody else said, hey, stop that, hey, don't do that, then everybody thinks it's okay. And when somebody does stand up and say, hey, stop that, hey, don't do that, then that person's wrong. That person ain't flowing. And no, it ain't that they're wrong, it's just that we have to understand apostolic order and we have to understand how the Spirit of the Lord is moving. And if, if, if you, the pastor, and you ain't released me, then I ought not lose my seat. I ought to stay seated until you release me to flow in that ministry. But in church, everybody wants to be the front person. Everybody wants to have their gifts on display. Everybody wants to be seen working and operating and moving because they want everybody to see how gifted they are, how wonderful they are, how deep they are. And you being able to do that does not make you deep or spiritual. It just makes you religious. <laughs> Go ahead, because man. it's done out of religiosity. That's all. That's all bad. And you can all, okay. Go ahead. You can always tell when it's really a move of God and when it's just people operating in the flesh. Because when it's a real move of God, then you're going to see a change in that individual. Mm -hmm. Amen. If after all that handling and all slapping you done did, all that calling fire down from heaven and tongue speaking, rolling in the flow, running around the church, shouting hallelujah, speaking in tongues and all of that good stuff. After you've got done doing all of that, you done laid your hands on somebody, it ain't no change. It ain't that God ain't working. It's just God ain't working in you like that. That's all right. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes sir. And so you got to stop. And stop all that. Oh, the Lord gave me a word for you. Stop that stuff. Hey, go ahead. You only speaking what you know because you didn't heard the latest gossip. Because if it was a true word from God, if it was a true word from God, then what they say is confirmation on what you already heard. Okay. Scripture says, once it was spoken, but twice have I heard it. What does that mean? That means not only was it spoken in the spirit, but now it was spoken in the natural. And what was spoken in the natural has to line up with that which was spoken in the spirit. Amen. So if it ain't lining up with what you done already, when I, if I tell you the Lord said it ain't nothing new to you, it's just new to me. Amen. Amen. Does, does that make sense? Yes, it does. Prime example, we got to move on. We should have got the stuff here. Um, <laughs> but prime example, a, a, a few weeks ago, when uh, the Spirit of the Lord began to move and He uh, began to allow us to operate in the prophetic, I'll never say that I'm a prophet. 
But I flow in that gift at times. That's right. When God needs me. That's right. Now watch this. Amen. Every person that was up there that I spoke to, one, I didn't know. I've never seen them. But I asked them purposely. I asked them purposely if you were paying attention. Yes. I asked them purposely was what I said right or wrong? Mm -hmm. yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't for my benefit. It was for yours. Amen. I did that so that you could see that God is still operating like that. Mm -hmm. That he's still speaking like that. Because I know what he said. But sometimes people got to have some proof, and that was your proof. And so that was your opportunity to start moving out of that box just a little bit more. That we've put God in thinking he ain't operating certain ways no more. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All right, any questions before I move on? Okay, so it says God's word goes a step further by showing that people uh, people who choose a divine are controlled or possessed by supernatural spirits which enable them to receive information beyond the human realm at a particular time. God's prophets receive their divine revelation by the Holy Spirit. On the other side of the spectrum are demonic spirits feeding information to fortune tellers and soothsayers. Make this note, the devil has prophets too. The devil has prophets too. Don't you be so naive to think that the devil don't know you. He's watching you. He's been paying attention to you. He know what you like. And so, because he knows what you like, there are certain people that know how to say certain stuff to get that reaction out of you. You ever try to figure out why it is you, you, you're connected to some people and you know they ain't no good for you, Tank. You know they ain't. You know they don't mean you no good. Yes. But they always know what to say. They know exactly what to say. They know exactly what to do to keep you in bondage. And the more you try to get free, the more you fight to get free, the tighter they grip you. And then once you relax, they relax. Because they want you to stay comfortable in the spirit of divination so they can keep speaking in your ear. Causing you to not only doubt the very word of God, but causing you to doubt who it is God has called you to be. There are so many gifts and talents in this church, it's ridiculous, but most people have listened to the wrong voices for so long that the wrong voices has now become right to them. And so anything that's said that goes against that old train of thought, they bunk. Yes. Yes. They don't tap into it. They won't, they won't gravitate to it because it pulls them from that place where, hey, wait a minute, I didn't get comfortable not being who I'm supposed to be. And I come to tell you, that's, that's a spirit of dysfunction because that's never what God intended for you. God never intended for you to allow your dysfunction to become normal. All right. But again, when we open these doors that we cannot close, it just allows these spirits to just keep on coming in and having their way. And next thing you know, you all twisted up. Walking around talking about something, I got church hurt. The church hurt me. <laughs> the church ain't did nothing. You had an issue with a person yeah. who goes to church. 
Yes. That hurt you. Yes. 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 What in church? You understand what I'm saying? I understand. All right. Says Paul. Uh, Luke tells us uh, of such a case in the book of Acts. Uh, and it came to pass uh, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination, divination met us, uh, which brought her masters much gain. In other words, she was getting them paid. By sooth saying, and the same followed Paul and us, and cried saying, These men are servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And she did this many days. And here's the part you got to get. But Paul being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus, come out of her. And he came out of her the same hour. That's Acts 16, 16 through 18. But well, watch this. It didn't change until Paul got grieved. So my question to you is this. When are you going to get grieved to start Paul to step out? <laughs> Scripture said he followed, she, 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 she followed him many days. So she kept nagging at him. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. Although <coughs> what she was saying was true, right. <coughs> it still doesn't take away that it was coming from the wrong spirit. Mm -hmm. So understand, yeah, 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 uh, the devil got prophets and he's going to say some stuff that's going to be true. There's some truth to it. But you got to watch the intent. That's behind what's coming at you. <coughs> but my question is, how long are you going to be grieved? When are you going to get grieved? How long are you going to keep putting up with the same old stuff? All right. Now, here's, 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 here's my issue. We won't tolerate it on the job. Mm -hmm. We won't even tolerate it in the street. Wow. With a jacket joker quick and put them in check. <laughs> But when it comes to spiritual matters, we become punks. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can say that, but it's too late out of a We become weak, we become wimps, and we tolerate stuff because church, or, or, or religion, should I say, has got us to the place where we start thinking that if I'm going through this, it must be God's will. Wake up. Everything ain't the will of God. Some stuff you win because you may decide to stand up and say, I ain't taking this mess no more. I'm tired of going through this. God is not required to do everything for you when he has given you the power to do it yourself. We quote, I can do all things through Christ that what? <laughs> but you keep putting up with this damsel for many days. Why? When you don't have to. My note says, you can never command what you are not grieved by. So truth be told, while it's grieving some folk, it ain't grieving you. Some people like having a monkey on their back. Because yes. that's the only way to have some company. That yes. pity part. <laughs> Secondly, although it was done in Jesus' name, uh, they did not have the authority to speak on his behalf. And so you have to know who you are in God and learn how to use the name of Jesus in the proper way and command some stuff to come out. But in order for you to command it, you have to recognize it. We have to stop chalking stuff up to that's just how they are. Mm. 
that's just what they do. That's just how we do. No, that ain't just how we do. Some stuff we need to stop doing because it ain't got nothing to do with God in the first place. And then you got to with your saved, sanctified, silly self to think that it's all right. Since God ain't checked me yet, I'm still getting away with it. Then I must be okay. I must be cool with God. No, God is just giving you enough time because over and over again, he's preaching to you. He's giving you the word. He's letting you know but that there's going to come a time where you're going to want God to speak. You're going to want God to send somebody to get you out of the mess you're in. And he's going to say, no, nah, they got prophets. I, I already sent them a word. Let them hear them. Wow. Stop playing with this stuff. These spirits are real and they are intending to jack you up. Their whole job is to keep you from fulfilling your God-given purpose. It's to keep you from singing, preaching, serving, whatever it is that God has called you to do. Their assignment is to keep you from doing it because they understand that if you ever really fully tap in and let the Holy Ghost really have, have, have his way in your life and you start obeying his command, you start obeying what the word really says, and you start living by these principles, you will be a major threat to the enemy's kingdom. And as long as he can keep you distracted, keep you frustrated, keep you reading horoscopes, trying to chase a million dollars that you ain't going never get, then that's more time you spend on that stuff and that's less time you spend in the presence of God. And if you're not in God's presence, then whose presence are you in? Am I making sense? Yes. Goes on to say, uh, the girl was a known fortune teller or soothsayer in the community. Y'all remember uh, those, those, those magic eight balls? Yes. How many of y'all have one? Tell me, Charles. Yeah, yeah, okay. You shake it up, you ask the eight ball question, and you know. That was you operating in the spirit of divination. Anytime you try to get a word from your, for your life outside of the word of God, then you're operating in that spirit. Mm -hmm. yes. no. <laughs> Nobody and nothing has the right to speak into your life unless it is God ordained. So I don't care if it's family, you have to close that door. I don't know why I keep going out of that church. I don't like that preacher. You should like that preacher either. Anything that the enemy can say to you to deter you and turn you, that's what he's going to do. And then he'll start saying stuff like, you ain't got to go to church to have a relationship with God. I know a lot of people. So I watch TV at home, I lay in my bed, I go to bed, and I this, and I turn on Joe Osteen and T V Chase, and I get my word just like that. And that's okay. But that's not scriptural. Scripture says, for sake not the assembling of yourselves together at the manner of some means. Amen. I don't care how much words you get on TV when you get sick. Don't call me, call him. Oh, I know. Mm -hmm. You need somebody to come pray for you. Don't call me, call him. That's why you're sending your money. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Stop thinking you don't need the body. I don't care how much folk get on your nerve. We're people. We ain't gonna always agree. That's gonna happen. Yes. 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 But you need the Bible. Amen. Why? Because there is a testimony you have that I don't have, but when I hear your testimony, it gives me strength. Amen. Amen. Revelation says, and they overcame. Mm -hmm. By what? Blood. And what? Testimony. Where am I going to get the testimony if I'm staying in bed? 
All right, y'all with? Yes. I am you did. Okay. It says, uh, girls who care the community, uh, although she spoke the truth about Paul and his party, it was not her intent to help them in the proclamation. The very fact that a woman of her reputation would choose to advertise their ministry was a terrible reproach on the name of Jesus. You got to watch the reputation of everybody that's talking about Jesus. Everybody ain't got a good reputation. So, no matter how much truth they're speaking, if they're a known liar, what you gonna go about? The truth they speak or the reputation you know? All right, we deal with people based off of their reputation. Period. Even if God has come in, Sister Reedy, and changed their life, we gonna slow walk that dog. Yes, we gonna make them prove to us God them really changed them. Because you're gonna always say, "I understand, but I remember we." That's why you have to be careful of the type of reputation you have. That's why some of your people won't come to church with you. Okay. They'll say they just don't want to go to church, but they don't want to tell you that, no, oh, man, you ain't got the best reputation. Mm -hmm. Because you're doing everything with them, and then you're trying to get on their case about living godly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you got to pick one. Right. Yes. Right. You can't lead me the right way while you drinking right along with me. <laughs> you can't come try to give me a word. Oh, the Lord, I had a dream last night and the Lord gave me a word for you and you spoke in the Bible. Oh my goodness. How'd that work? Yeah. No, no, no. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You have to maintain your reputation. In other words, you have to maintain your character. Because if you maintain your character, then reputation is no problem. Amen. 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 But when you when, when you can't maintain your character, then all people got to go off of is your reputation. And when your reputation and your character don't match, then you make God out to be a lie. Because everything out of your mouth at that point becomes double-minded. But the James says a double-minded man is what? In all his ways. That means everything you put your hands to, I might as well not even count on it because I know in a minute you're going to change your mind. You're going to flip-flop on it. And all of these things happen, watch this, when we start operating in the spirit of divination, why? Because we're listening to all these other voices and then we quiet the voice of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah. Because oftentimes the Holy Ghost will tell you to do things you really don't want to do, but you know you need to be doing it. And when you ignore the Holy Ghost, it ought to bother you. If your spirit is not grieved by ignoring a command from God, then I got news for you, you ain't God's. It, it, it ought to bother you when the Lord tells you to do something you don't do. You won't not be able to rest until you go back and get that thing right. Right. Brother, can I use you? Can I use you as an example? Help yourself. Okay. Brother Gary shared with me how the Lord told him to buy something for somebody. And he didn't do it. Years went by. He was grieved, but because he was trying to shrug it off, he didn't do it. And it wasn't until it got to the point where it bothered him so that he couldn't get no rest that he finally went and bought and gave the person what it is the Lord told him to give them years ago. 
But wow. Now watch this. He was free, but not the person was offended. Mm. Wow. You know why they were offended? Because he didn't go to the time. He missed the season. Right. He, he missed the season. Oh, the season when that person would have been receptive to that type of gift. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, they'd have been open. Their spirit would have been open and able to receive the move of God through this man at that time. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens when we take God's command and operate them operate in them in our own time when we miss the season and the window is closed. Mm -hmm. right back. And we try to figure out why ain't nothing happening, why ain't nothing moving. It ain't because God ain't God, it's because you missed the opportunity. Amen. Am I making sense? Yes. So when he speaks, you got to move. Yes, sir. Um, well, Brother Gary, my wife, know about, about the story. Uh, you know, when I got out of jail, you was in jail? Yes. Yeah. It's so sweet. And, uh, nah, nah, nah. Really? Been in more than one time. But this time I was up for, I was up for uh, temporary case for 25, 30 years. But the Lord just like I say, down, downtown. But what happened is I did something to a person. And when I got out, the Lord got me out. Not man. But, uh, but uh, when I got out, I was, you know, I was at home. I told my mom, so I said I was home maybe about a month. The Lord kept telling me, he said, look, go tell that person, ask for forgiveness. And my mom said, don't do it, because the people wanted me. So when I go around there, when I go to the house, they opened the door up, they sell. And everybody in the house saw it. And they said, oh, la, 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 la. You know, and my name had to start, so they said, no, get away now before we blow you up. And I asked them, I asked, you know, and say, hey, I got to talk to you. The Lord asked me and told me to come around and ask for forgiveness. We walked out the door. He hugged me and said, I already forgave you. So I was I was free. He was free. We sat down and talked. Right today, we we the best of friends, good with the family, and I'm still good with the family and everything. But like you said, Pastor, you know, when the Lord's talk to you, you know, when he asked when he tell you to do something, go ahead and do it. So, and so you can't be free from you know, this is one of my stories. <laughs> now watch this. In that story, you had God telling him this thing, go, get it right, get forgiven. You had his mother That's right. saying, don't you go over there. Check out how it works. He'll use anything, anybody, and he'll strike it any time. You're right. Now, while his mother felt she was trying to protect her son, right, 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 right. We talk. she was causing him to doubt the very voice of God. Because who wants to go against their mother? That's true. That's true. And so had he hearkened to the will of his mother, right. then he'd have missed his season. That's right. And he's still been walking around bound, or better yet, maybe even dead today, because he didn't get what he was supposed to get, because he didn't move when he was supposed to move. So healing couldn't take place for that entire family. Right. Had he missed his season, it would have been somebody in that family still holding the grudge, mm -hmm. still looking for him. Y'all yeah. see how that works? Yes. Touch your neighbor, say, hear and obey. Yeah. It says just because they speak the truth, uh, but not for God, their glory will only bring shame. That's my thought. Just because a spirit speaks the truth, but they're not speaking the truth for God, then what would be glory turns into shame. If you're going to be God's, be God's. Amen. If you're going to speak for him, speak for him. But you can't speak, on, speak for him on Sunday and Monday. <laughs> then Tuesday through Friday, you cussing up a storm. 
Tell the folk where to go, how to get there, and then you let them know. I'll draw you a road map if you need one. Ooh. Can't do that. Y'all with me? Yeah. All right. Uh, it says, as Paul became more and more grieved in his spirit, the Holy Spirit revealed what was going on. Y'all underline that. The Holy Spirit revealed what was going on. I don't care what you do, you need the Holy Amen. Spirit. Amen. And I got news for you. He does more than just give you a good feeling and make you shout. Amen. There's more to the Holy Spirit than that. And I'll even go so far to submit to you that there is nothing spiritual about shouting. Amen. Now you're looking at me funny, so let me prove my case and I'm going to roll all up out of here. <laughs> if I gave you $1,000 right now, what would you do? Shout, shout. And you a You'll be grateful. And you're going to be like, well, God, God told him to do it. No, not always. The enemy knows how to give you good things to shift your attention and suck you in. Yeah. Yeah. But shouting starts in the flesh. Yes. You're not spiritual about that. But your praise ought to transcend into worship. Once you get to the level of worship, then there is an intimacy between you and God. And now you're coming out of the flesh and you start operating in the spirit realm. Yes, sir. But some people never get past praise. Because to go into worship means you have to be willing to be exposed. There's a level of intimacy in worship where you can't come in there with all your airs and being prideful and being arrogant and being pumped up. No, when you start entering into worship, you got to go in there. You got to be broke down. You got to be naked. You got to be willing to be touched in places that can't nobody else touch you. You got to be willing to hear and obey it's despite how it looks and despite how it feels, despite what it seems like. When you start worshiping God, then that's going to take you to a place where you start seeing you for who you really are. Yes, 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 yes. Worship is not meant for me to expose my name. Right. Amen. It ain't meant for me to be all in your business. Right. Amen. Worship is that intimate time between me and God. Yes, yes, yes. So if I'm laid out on the floor, who me there? If I'm on the altar crying, leave me there. Don't come over there fanning me. <laughs> leave me alone. You understand what I'm saying? But there is nothing that you can do without the Holy Spirit. Now watch this. When you have true praise, then you will start thinking about it. Psalm says, when I think about the good of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out. But now when I have the Holy Ghost resident in me and I start thinking about what God has done, then the Holy Ghost begins to rise up in me and he begins to connect to the very thing that God has done for me. And now I'm starting to praise the very God of my salvation. And next thing you know, I have entered into worship because I've allowed the Holy Ghost to do what it is. He's been on the inside of me to do in the first place. And that's getting me to the very throne room of God. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. That's why praise is necessary, but we all not ever just stay in praise. I know folks talk about all the time. Man, we had church day, man. We shouted all over the place. But did anybody know the worship? Did. Yeah. <laughs> did anybody make it to the throne room? Mm. Because we got to stop saying that we had good church just because folks shouted. Amen. 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 Can I give y'all something for free? 
fish out and stop me, I should pass him peace on you. Go ahead. Stop saying you going to church. Right. You the church. So every time you talk about I'm going to church, you're going to yourself. Right. Your mindset has to change. I'm going to worship. Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. Okay. So if, if my mindset is I'm going to worship, whenever I step through these doors, I'm already ready. Yes. Yes. Praise team ain't got to sing ten songs to get me yes. to get me there. I, I, I can't be in ready. Oh, Rather they do it or not, I can't yes. be in ready. Why? Because worship and praise has become a lifestyle for me, and it's something that I do at home. Yes. 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 The reason many people have a hard time talking to God here is because they don't talk to Him nowhere else. Come on. <laughs> so let the Holy Ghost do His job. Yield to Him. Some of y'all He's speaking to even now. Let the Holy Ghost do His job. Thank you. Y'all with me? I ain't made you mad now. Nothing. It says uh, uh, that the Holy Ghost revealed to him what was going on. And the Holy Ghost will always let you know when you're sensitive and when you're open what's taking place. <coughs> the Bible says the Spirit maketh intercession for us because we don't know how to pray like we need to. <laughs> so if you allow him to do what he's supposed to do, he'll always let you know. Women call it their intuition. Men call it their first mind. But it's the Holy Ghost. Or they say something. Well, something told me, something <laughs> said, it, it's, it's the Holy Ghost, baby. Especially when it's leading you right. Now, there's some other ghosts out there. <laughs> you might not want to listen to them. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, it says he rebuked the spirit of divination in the name of Jesus Christ uh, he didn't speak to the girl but to the spirit operating through her my note says you have to know who to address that's why we got to stop saying that oh this is just how she act no that's a spirit that's right and we beating up people because they got spirits operating in them, but because we're so spiritually immature in some areas, we just, we just, I'm just going to whoop you. I'm not going to deal with the spirit. I'm going to deal with you. And truth is, the reason we rather deal with the person than deal with the spirit, because most times we ain't right either. <laughs> and that spirit pick up on the fact that you ain't right, that joke stop calling you out. And now here it is, now you all embarrassed and shame. Now you know. Yeah. That's why you gotta watch all that laying hands on folks. Because if you ain't ready and God ain't led you to do it, whoo, you gonna get some exposure you don't want. And the very thing you try to cast out, now you sitting over in the corner with your head all pumping down and your hands in your lap. You don't want nobody looking at you. Now you trying to find a way to slide out the door. Because <laughs> you was operating in the flesh. The Holy Ghost never told you. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, it says, uh, next session, section says, uh, but we have a clear example here that the power of God is always greater than the power of the devil, which it is. Uh, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, John 4 and 4, or 1 John 4 and 4. The demon had to leave when it was ordered to do so in the name of Jesus by a child of God. But my question is this, do you have enough Jesus in you to speak with authority and demons obey? 
Coming to church don't mean you got Jesus. You, you got change. Can you change this? I, I don't care how long you've been saved. Uh, give me 15 minutes. I don't care how long you've been saved. You can have the biggest Bible there is and still not have Jesus. You still ain't got no power. You still struggling with the same stuff. If you're going to speak in the name of Jesus, you got to have power to back it up. What does the power come from? The power comes from the Holy Spirit and then your faith and your belief that God is able to do the very things you're speaking. You keep talking stuff you don't believe. Because it's good church journey. It's good church stuff to say. Walk around quoting all these cliches. Ain't got nothing to do with God. But it sounds good and it sounds deep. So that's what we do. And so then we start regurgitating these different things that we're hearing. And when we start doing that, we start to silence the very voice of God. And we start to promote all these other things that we're hearing because all these other things is what makes people excited. It starts to play on people's emotion. And the enemy knows that if he can get you emotional, all he gonna have you. Because many of us, truth be told, some days, our emotions way outside. You ain't always on cloud nine. So your emotions are gonna wake you up. And when we don't put that stuff in check, when we start hearing these things that we know go against the very word of God, and we don't put that stuff in check, the longer you leave it unchecked, the more it starts to grow. You ever, you ever seen a person with kids not close? and we'll pick it up with God next, next week. You ever seen the person with kids and the kids are small? But the kid be hitting the parent? Yeah. Yeah. Cussing at the parent? Yeah. Yeah. Saying all sorts of stuff? <laughs> and the parent just, you know, yes. don't check the behavior? Is that? Not a child 16 years old? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Right. Telling the parent what to do? And this day the parent decides she want to rise up or he want to rise up. And, you know, now he want to check the spirit. What is going on too long? Now he got to fight on his hands. And that's what happens when we're hearing things in the spirit realm that go against God and we don't check them. When we hear people talking against God and we don't check it. How long are you going to go before you get greedy? And you just have to turn around and command that spirit. Start talking to that spirit. Let that spirit know, no, it ain't going to work like that. In the name of Jesus. But don't use the name if you don't believe it. Just because you come to church every Sunday don't mean you believe in the name. It just means you know what to do on Sunday. And that's just how you were raised. Because truth is, and if you got a question, get your question correct. The truth is, it's impossible. It's impossible to honestly walk and stay with God and consistently be nasty. Right. Mm, yes. Yes. It's impossible. Yes. Mm. You know how much effort it takes to purposely keep an attitude with me? A lot. Mm. 
to purposely wake up and say, I ain't going to talk to you when I see you. To actively avoid me. You know how much effort and energy that takes? And then some folk been mad so long they don't even know what they mad about. Don't act like that. Don't let your horoscope have you. You just got to shake the beat. If you want to know the word for your life, talk to the Bible. Spend some time in prayer. Hear what the Lord has to say. I guarantee you, it'd be a whole lot better than you having to pay that $2.99 or however much it costs because it's like your hotline is still working. I don't know. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Calling Miss Cleo. I don't know if she's still around. <laughs> oh, she in jail. You understand what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? So, 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 be careful with that spirit of definition. We're going to dig into it some more. But, that's some other stuff. We're going to start talking about magic and some other stuff like that. How all these, these, these spells that people use. You know, you'll talk about, well, I don't watch, uh, uh, what, what, what's the movie that you cast spells? Uh, Harry Potter. Yeah, I won't watch Harry Potter, but I'll let my daughter watch a Disney movie, Snow White, in the Seven Doors, and they cast the spells in there too. That's Hmm? Yeah, but so is Snow White and Seven Doors. But, 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 but you see how we allow certain things based on the presentation. And that's how the enemy gets us. So now your daughter walks around the house, bippity boppity boo. You understand what I'm saying? Same thing. Same thing. But it's the presentation that throws us off. The enemy is slick. He know we're caught up by how stuff look. And so based on how it look, if it look kid friendly, oh, it got to be all right. Not all right. I know how to mess you up. I know. I know. I know. I see you. I see you. You all messed up. But, but when, you, when you really look at it, it's the same thing. So how are you going to speak against one and endorse the other? Then you become that double-minded man. Go on. Is it double-minded then, you know, I think I told my husband, Told somebody, how can you get that piece of devil? You have kids in these games. Yeah. I mean, no, they get these games and they're glued to it. And I'm just watching, you know, my perfect grandbaby. Anyway, she's a good, kind, gentle little girl. And now she's like, can't hear, but I can see. See? You know? You know, she has, and I have to take it away. Yeah. You, know. You, you, you know, the problem with that is uh, traditional parenting has gone out of style. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, they have. You understand what I'm saying? See, when, when I was growing up, I, I was able to watch TV, but I had a limit. Right. Yes. To how much I can take you. That's right. right. You right. And then they made me go outside and play. You right. That's right. You're right. That's you right. 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 And so, so, so making me go outside and play forced me to develop social skills. That's right. 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 That's right. Taught me how to talk to people. That's right. Taught me how to interact and learn the world around me. That's right. Wow. The day that we live in now, everything is so convenient. Right. And so nobody wants to leave the house. They don't have to. Because everything's at their fingertips. That's right. And, it and so be. it's not the children's fault. It's the parent. Because That's right. my child can That's only right. do as much as I allow. Like. That's, That's right. And because mom didn't work all day, day. dad done worked all day, they both tired, they didn't get right. out from their job. When they get home, they don't have anything left. So they tell their baby, oh, let me just go over there and watch TV. Or here, take my phone. And they can play the games with the phone. Yes. Turn, turn around, Tam. What am I talking about? Just turn around. Right. Turn around. Right. Turn around. Right. 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 That's all right. That's all right. I like the so, so, yes. so that's what happens. So, so, so it's, it's not the devil. 
It, it's just that the family dynamic has to change. The train has changed. No, it, it, that, that's, that's what we no. have to stop. No, don't be the devil. No. We have to stop no. saying no. that everything is the devil because we use him as a scapegoat. Right. It, it's not the devil, but there has to be some more balance created in the home. That's right. That, that, that's all. That's and so right. it's, it, it's a reprogramming for parents and children. Because you have to remember now, children are growing up where this stuff is normal. Okay. Our day, this was normal. Right. Right. So for them, they know it, we're still learning. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So that, that, that's all that is, but it's, it, it goes back to And it that. should be a limit on it. It should be a limit. It, it, it needs to be. That's it right. needs to be. Because you have to understand that I'm done after this. You have to understand that your children or your grandchildren are going to produce what they take in the most. Right. Right. Reference the game, the music, the movie, whatever they take in the most, their ear gate and their eye gate is the very thing that they're going to produce for you. That's right. So, so even if they're playing games, then you got to switch the kind of games they play. That's right. Yeah. Battles, battles educational games, right. battles yeah. reading book kind of games, and things like that. Just yeah. Yeah. So we got to shift that stuff. You know, we've all been guilty. I know I have. I, I talk about me, I've been guilty. Daddy, can we do the book? Daddy, just, just, just get, you know, give me a few minutes. You understand know what I'm saying? Look, we're going to watch TV. Just give me about two minutes. I have to leave that. And so, but when that behavior goes unchecked, and you let it go on too long, then that's when you have problems. Okay. Any questions?